Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here, uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings for uh, Tuesday, December the 20th. Got a, you know, short Tuesday slate. Um, most of the time on Tuesday, you know, it's usually a shorter slate. We got five games tonight, um, but we're going to go game by game, guys. I'm going to give you guys my quick thoughts on the slate, what I do like, taking a first look on Monday night. We'll do a quick game by game breakdown. Uh, before we do get started with the breakdown, though, as always, if you guys do enjoy these DFS videos, if they do help you out, Please hit that like button down below, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And if you guys are new to the channel, check out the sponsor of the video, Prize Picks. Uh, Prize Picks, they are a player prop based DFS site. I'm sure most of you guys have heard about Prize Picks, uh, but if you're not playing over there, get signed up, use promo code NOAA. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. Um, I usually post videos every day. You, you'll see them on the channel for Prize Picks. Uh, we did post a video for Monday Slate, gave out two picks on Monday, hit both of our two plays. Also hit the three plays I gave out on Patreon. So if you guys are watching the YouTube videos, tailing those plays, if you want more prize picks plays from me, you can check out the Patreon link down below in the description. Not only do I give out additional prize picks plays on Patreon, but I also give out DFS content. So player pools, core plays for DraftKings and for Yahoo, I post on Patreon as well. So a lot of stuff goes up over there. Check that out. Link down below in the description. Also, if you're not signed up for prize picks yet, get signed up. That link is also in the description as well. Or just when you sign up, make sure to use promo code NOAA. Um, and I should have a video posted for prize picks for today. If I don't get it posted Monday night, late Monday night, then it'll definitely be up sometime on Tuesday afternoon. I will be given, uh, giving out a couple plays I like for prize picks today for free on YouTube. Check out that video, you know, when it does get posted. But let's go ahead and talk through Tuesday's uh, little five-game slate. We'll start off with the first game of the night, the Jazz and the Pistons. Um, the Jazz, they're on a back-to-back -back today, so we'll definitely need to monitor their injury report. We did see Kelly Olynyk sit out on Monday. Um, we don't really, you know, have any update yet on him, so... That'll be something to keep an eye on. Um, but looking at Utah here, it's a you know, pretty good spot here for Utah. Detroit has definitely been one of the worst defensive teams in the league. I think, you know, in terms of them and like the Spurs, like those are the two worst defenses overall. So I think it's a good matchup for guys like Larry Market and Jordan Clarkson. Um, definitely want to keep an eye on the status of uh, Mike Conley. We've seen Mike Conley sit on a lot of back-to-backs this season. I don't think he's play he has played on a one back-to-back -back this year. Um but he's played on two back-to-backs, but like sometimes he's always a you know has a chance to rest on back-to-backs. He he's coming back from an injury too, so definitely keep an eye on that. We could maybe see Mike Conley sit today if he were to get ruled out. You know that would definitely benefit someone like Clarkson. At these price tags, I wouldn't consider these Utah guys like core plays or anything. But I think if you're playing multiple lineups, they are guys that I would definitely want to sprinkle in just because it is it is or it is such a good matchup that I think you know we could see one of these guys do well here, whether it be Markin Clarkson. Um, you know, maybe Malik Beasley, but probably would only consider Malik Beasley, you know, if a guy like Conley gets ruled out. Do want to talk about the bigs, though. So, like I said, Kelly Olenek, he did not play on Monday night. Don't really have any update yet on his status for Tuesday. We did see Walker Kessler start in place of Olenek. He played 25 minutes, had 25 drafting points. That was a really tough matchup against Cleveland. This is obviously a much better matchup against Detroit. The price tag is up to, you know, 5K now, but I definitely think if Olenek is out again and Kessler starts, Kessler is going to be a pretty decent value play, and he might be like my favorite play from Utah. You know, if he, if uh, you know, if um, Olenek gets ruled out, so we'll have some interest in Walker Kessler. Probably not, you know, going to consider anything else on Utah. Obviously, if Conley gets ruled out, that benefits Clarkson, benefits Malik Beasley a little bit. It would probably benefit NAW as well. Um, NAW in a scenario where Conley sits on the back to back would be a really good value, but. You know, we don't really have that news right now. We can't really make any speculations. So let's go ahead and move on to Detroit, talk about the Pistons. And, you know, the Pistons, they, they're not a team I've really been looking to target much as of late. And I don't think on this slate I'm super interested in many Pistons. But the one guy that I do have interest in, I don't know why he's still this cheap. But Jalen Duran for 4800 I mean, he just continues to crush like every night. 38, 37, 29 DraftKings points over his last three games. This is a really good matchup against Utah. We've seen Utah struggles against struggle against bigs this center struggle against centers I know Jared Allen had a really big game against Utah on Monday night they've been a you know, relatively bad rebounding team they give up a lot of points in the paint Jalen Duran he's a guy that you know a lot of his production is going to come from like on the glass I mean when he gets points it's usually from offensive rebounds from putbacks um, we saw him dominate against Charlotte because that's what Charlotte really struggles with is giving up offensive rebounds putbacks it's the same for this Utah team so I think at 4,800, Jalen Duran looks like a really good value today. Have a lot of interest in him on this slate. I think he's just too cheap right now. Um, he's continuing to play good minutes. Obviously, the Pistons, you know, they have nothing to play for. They're in evaluation mode, so they should continue to give these younger guys some more minutes like a, you know, Jalen Duran. But like Jaden Ivey, you know, Isaiah Stewart, Bojan, Killian Hayes, 
I don't think on a, you know, even on a five-game slate, I don't love these guys. Bojan's been rock solid this season. It's a revenge game as well, but like, at 6,400, he feels priced about right. He's not a guy that really has much of a ceiling. I know he had 51 against the Lakers, but normally Bojan's putting up like, you know, 35, 40, and that's solid at his price tag, but that's not like going to win you a GPP. Um, so that's really it for this game. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, the Bulls and the Heat. So look at the uh, the Heat today. Jimmy Butler, I believe, is probable. He is. He, he's expected to play. Um, I think Kyle Lowry is questionable, though. That's definitely one we'll need to keep an eye on. You're looking at Miami. They're, they're not a team I'm super interested in today, but obviously if Lowry does sit, that would benefit you know, Butler, Hero, and Bam a little bit. These guys have all been priced up, though, a good amount. You know, Butler's up to 9200 Hero, uh, Hero is 8800 Bam is 8400 at their salaries, I don't think any of them are, like, standout plays for me. If I had to pick one of my favorite, like, between those three guys, my favorite would probably be Butler, just because I think on a per-minute basis, he's normally the guy that's going to average the the most fancy points per minute there, or the, you know, the best fancy point per minute production. The price tag at 9200 still reasonable. Like, Jimmy Butler still has the upside to pay off this price tag. But none of these Miami guys look like core plays today. Um, and obviously, if Lowry plays, you know, it's you know, obviously not a spot I really want to attack just because these guys have all kind of been priced up a little bit. Um, and there's really nothing else on Miami I like. Like, this is a team I've just kind of, you know, outside of the main guys like Butler and Hero and Bam, like, just I'm not going to go to Kayla Martin or Max Struess or, you know, Victor Oladipo on a five game slate. These guys aren't that cheap either. It's not like we're getting, you know, a ton of value here. Right now, Miami is, you know, not that appealing of a team. And then on the other side with Chicago, I mean, I don't really like much on the Bulls. It's definitely a tougher spot against Miami. Miami's a you know, solid defensive team. They play at a, a relatively slow pace. DeRozan always has upside, and if I had to go to one of the Bulls guys, I think DeRozan would probably be my favorite. Don't love this matchup against Jimmy Butler, but last time they played, I mean, DeRozan put up 64 drafting points against Miami. That was like that had to have been like his best game of the season. I'm pretty sure it was. I don't. Did Jimmy Butler play in that game? Yeah, Jimmy Butler played in that game, and I guess, and DeRozan put up 64, so that was kind of odd. Um, I mean, if, if I had to pick a bull today, it would be DeRozan. Levine at 7,300, he's just like, okay. I mean, he's just not really shown much upside this season. He's had some good games, but normally he's putting up like 35, 40 DK points. So at 7,300, doesn't really stand out. It's a really tough matchup for Vooch, so I'm not super in, into Vooch today. The rest of the Bulls, I'm not that interested in. I know Caruso's been starting lately, but he's just... He's not the best permanent producer when he's playing with Levine, Vooch, and DeRozan. Um, so from the Bulls today, I think it's just DeRozan and that's it. And honestly, this game is not that appealing. I don't like much here. I think you can like take shots on Butler and Hero and Bam and, and DeRozan, but I don't know if there's going to be any core or like optimal plays you know, coming from this game unless injury news changes things. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one, the Warriors and the Knicks. The Warriors, they're definitely a team we're going to have to spend some time on today, so... Steph Curry still out for Golden State. Andrew Wiggins still out. Klay Thompson, I believe, is probable, so he is expected to play. You're starting off with Jordan Poole. We saw Jordan Poole dominate last game without Steph, without Wiggins. He played 35 minutes, had 55 draftings points. This is a pretty good matchup against the Knicks. I mean, the Knicks, their defense this season hasn't been like as strong, but I know it's been improving as of late. Um, it's, I think it's actually been pretty good as of late. I think Quentin Grimes has been a good, re you know, big reason for their defense improving. He's been really good defensively. Quentin Grimes will probably, you know, defend Poole here. But Poole is just going to get so much usage without Steph and Wiggins. He's going to play so many minutes. He's going to take a ton of shots. Even at 8,100, even though this price tag is starting to get up there, like I think Poole still has the upside to pay off this price tag. I think we're going to see him put up you know, 40, 45 draftings points a night while Steph is out just because the offense is going to run through Poole. Um, so I'm still interested in Poole quite a bit, even at this salary. Um, I think Clay Thompson's fine as well. It's 6,600. You know, Clay doesn't contribute as much with the peripheral stats like Poole does. He doesn't really contribute as much with assists and rebounds. He did have seven rebounds last game. Um, normally, when Clay has a big game, it's going to come from scoring, and, and that's really you know where he where he gets a lot of his fancy production from. But I think this is definitely a good matchup for scoring. The Knicks this season they give up a lot of three point attempts, and that's where you know Clay Thompson is obviously going to do a lot of his damage. So I'm very interested in Clay today at 6600. You're getting a little bit of a discount you know off of Poole when you go to him. I think you could play. Pull and Clay together. Um, don't know if I would like force it in, but I think it's something you could do. Dante DiVincenzo has been playing really well as a starter uh, the last few games, 38, 35, 33 minutes. Production came down a little bit last game, but I think DiVincenzo is okay at 6,200. I don't love him at the salary. He's definitely starting to get priced up to a point where he doesn't really stand out anymore, but I wouldn't be surprised if he went out there and put up like 35 drafting points, which at the salary is, is okay. Um, but I, you know where he's priced at. I don't think DiVincenzo is like a core option or anything. 
Draymond, I know, got off to like a really hot start last game and then kind of cooled off late, um, like in the second half. But he played 37 minutes, had 36 drafting points. He was much more aggressive offensively, which, I mean, Draymond at this point, just like he doesn't really provide much offense. But he, he did take 15 shots last game. And that has to be like, that has to be a season high for him. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, that's the first game all season he's took 15 shots. So maybe without Steph and without, you know, uh, Wiggins, we start to see Draymond be a little bit more aggressive offensively. I know the Raptors, I think they were just kind of like le leaving him open from three. And I know he hit like a couple threes right out of the gate to start the game. At 5,900, this price tag is not that, like, not that high. I mean, 5,900 is cheap for Draymond. Does he benefit without Steph and without Wiggins? I mean, probably not because, you know, Draymond, a lot of his production comes from, like, assists to those guys. But, you know, maybe he starts to be more aggressive offensively. It was good to see him, you know, take 15 shots last game. If we continue to get that type of shot volume from Draymond, we know he's going to get you the rebounds. He's going to get those assists. He's going to get defensive stats. Just needs We need a little bit more scoring from him. And, you know, again, the fact that he scored 17 points last game, had 15 shot attempts, that's a, at least a step in the right direction. So I'm definitely in a Draymond at 5,900. I think right now my favorite plays from Golden State are Poole, uh, Clay, and Draymond. DiVincenzo's okay, but he's, his price tag doesn't look that great. And then Jonathan Kaminga, need to keep an eye on his status. I believe he's probable as well. So he is expected to play. Uh, he did lead their last game. He only played five minutes. It looks like he did come off the bench last game. I know the game against Philadelphia he started, but he came off the bench last game. I think that was on Saturday. I wasn't paying attention to a, a ton of NBA on Saturday. I'm guessing they started Poole, Clay, DiVincenzo, Draymond, and then Looney. Um, so yeah, it makes sense that you know Kaminga went back to the bench last game. So not really interested in Kaminga. Um, but that'll do it, I think, for Golden State. Don't see anything else I really like here. Now on the other side with the Knicks, you got Julius Randle at 9,100. You got Brunson at 7,200. RJ Barrett at 6,900. We know in a competitive game, these guys are getting big minutes. I know Randall's been playing really well as of late, been playing huge minutes. He'll probably get matched up with Draymond, so I don't love that matchup individually, but Randall's okay at 9,100. You know, he's been playing really well, but obviously the price tag has gotten to a point where he's not like a slam dunk. Jalen Brunson at 7,200, I think would be my favorite of the Knicks guys, you know, kind of their, their main three guys. This price tag for Brunson is definitely still appealing. You know, he's been priced like in the, the high sixes, low sevens for most of the season. In a game like this against Golden State, this should be a pretty fast-paced game, should be relatively high scoring. I think this does set up as a pretty good spot for Brunson. Um, the price tag's not, you know, too bad. Like, 7,200, he definitely has the upside to pay off this price tag. So I do have some interest in Brunson as a mid-range guard option. RJ Barrett's been playing huge minutes lately. 6,900, he feels priced about right, but I'm fine with Barrett just because we know the minutes are going to be there. Um, he's always in play when, you know, he's getting like almost 40 minutes a night. But that's probably it from the Knicks. Like, I don't think I'm going to go to Mitchell Robinson today. Um, you know, his minutes have been strong lately. He's playable at 5,200, but don't think this is like the best spot for Mitchell Robinson. Um, I would prefer, I prefer to go to Mitchell Robinson against teams like Charlotte and Utah, those type of teams that struggle to rebound, give up a lot of putbacks. That's not really like the Warriors, so... The Warriors don't really do that, so I don't know if this is like the best Mitchell Robinson spot. But that's probably it from the Knicks. Like Quentin Grimes, I know he's been starting, playing good minutes. He's 4,800, though. That feels priced about right for you know what kind of upside he has. It's really the main three guys, Randall, Brunson, Barrett, that I like from New York. And I think my favorite is probably Brunson. Um, but that's it for that game. Let's talk about the last two games of the night. So Washington and Phoenix. Looking at Phoenix today, got some injury news to keep an eye on here. So we did see... Devin Booker sit on Monday. I was kind of surprised to see him get ruled out. Um, I assumed that he sat Monday so that he could play today, but this will be something to keep an eye on. It is a back-to-back -back for the Suns. Um, assuming Booker plays, I don't really like much on Phoenix because with Booker back, obviously Chris Paul takes a hit. Mikael Bridges takes a hit. DeAndre Ayton takes a hit. Craig would take a hit too. Like None of these guys look that appealing at their price tags if Booker is in, but if Booker remains out, then I could, you know, I could get down for Chris Paul even at 8,300. Chris Paul had a huge game on Monday against the Lakers. Um, game game lock hasn't updated yet, but I'm pretty sure he had like 50 DraftKings points or somewhere around there. He had like over 20 points. He had almost 10 assists. Um, he had a couple steals. Really good game from Chris Paul Monday night. You would expect him to continue to produce at a high rate while Booker sits if Booker gets ruled out. Um, I would be interested in Paul if Booker's out. I'd have, a, I'd have a little bit of interest in Aiton, a little bit of interest in Bridges, but at their price tags, I don't think they're as appealing. Torrey Craig's priced up to 5600 I know he had a really good game Monday, but I'm not super interested in him at that price tag. So really, if Booker plays, like Booker you could maybe go to. If Booker's out, I'm interested in CP3. And that's probably it from Phoenix. I don't love much on Phoenix today. Now on the other side with the Wizards, Wizards are pretty much back to full strength. They got Bradley Beal back, so... With Bradley Beal back, I don't love much on Washington. 
Obviously, Porzingis has been playing really well lately, but I think his usage is going to take a hit with uh, Beal back. Plus, it's kind of a tough matchup against Phoenix. So at a 9K price tag, Porzingis is not that appealing to me. Kuzma's 8,600. Don't love him at this price tag. I know he had a really big game against the Lakers last game, but this is obviously a much tougher matchup. Price tag at 8,600 feels a little bit too high for me. Now, Bradley Beal, I think he's the guy that I would go to if I had to play anyone on the Wizards today. Beal, you know, he was not super productive in his first game back from injury. He played 32 minutes, had 34 drafting points. I would expect him to start to play more minutes moving forward. Um, you know, obviously, first game back from injury, you, you're probably not going to play a guy 40 minutes, but I think we could probably get like 34, 35 minutes from Beal. And then maybe next game, you'll see him play like, you know, his normal 36, 38 minutes. But if we're getting 35 minutes from Beal at 7,900, even in kind of a tougher matchup, I think Beal's appealing. Um, if I had to play anyone on Washington, I think he would, he would be my favorite play. But Denny Avia, I'm not interested in with Beal back. The rest of Washington, like even Monte Morris, I'm not interested in. No one else stands out here. Not that appealing of the game, honestly, but I think like Beal is in play. If Booker gets ruled out, I have interest in Chris Paul. If Booker plays, I think he's okay. But don't love much in this Washington-Phoenix game. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the last game of the night, Memphis and Denver. So looking at Denver today, I believe Nikola Jokic is probable. He is expected to play, but Jamal Murray is questionable. So this will be something to monitor. He's uh, questionable for injury man uh, management. I'm guessing this is, I guess they're on a back-to-back. -back. I'm not sure. Let's see if, um, I want to see if Denver plays on Wednesday. I assume that's why he's questionable. Um, I know you guys probably don't care, but I want to take a look at it. So Denver, looks like Denver doesn't play on Wednesday. Interesting. I don't know why he'd be questionable. Um, but yeah, I guess Jamal Murray questionable for injury management. That'll be something to keep an eye on. I think Michael Porter Jr., he's doubtful, so he's not expected to be back yet. Um, and then KCP, I think he's questionable too, but his injury isn't really too impactful. But definitely the Jamal Murray news is important. So if Jamal Murray plays, it's 6,900. Like, I think he's okay, but I don't love him at that salary. Really, nothing on Denver stands out outside of Jokic. Um, this is definitely not the best matchup against Memphis and going up against Steven Adams, but Jokic has just been on another level lately. And obviously, we saw him put up that just enormous game against Charlotte, put up 40, 10, or 40, 27, and 10, had almost 100 drafting points. He had 95 DraftKings points played 40 minutes. Would expect some regression here. Don't think we're going to get another 90-point game from Jokic, but he still offers you know 65-70 point upside. Again, it's a tougher matchup, so I don't think this is like the best spot for Jokic. But Jokic is matchup proof. He would definitely get a boost if Jamal Murray gets ruled out. I'd be a little bit more interested in uh, Jokic if Murray sits. Also, would be interested in Bruce Brown. I think Bruce Brown would be the the biggest beneficiary, one of the biggest beneficiaries if Jamal Murray sits. He would probably start at point guard, would play pretty good minutes. He's already been playing good minutes this season, but he would play really big minutes. 5,500 would definitely be too cheap for Bruce Brown if Jamal Murray gets ruled out. And I think um, Bones Highland will look pretty good as well. Now, Bones Highland's minutes have not been great lately, but obviously if Jamal sits, we can expect Bones to play more off the bench. He's going to play a lot with the second unit, so he's going to have really good usage playing with the second unit. So Bones and Bruce Brown, I would be interested in both of those guys if Jamal Murray gets ruled out. For now, though, expecting Jamal Murray to play, only guy that I'm really interested in from Denver is Jokic. And then on the other side, looking at Memphis, you know, John Morant is someone that I'm kind of always interested in. It's a really good matchup here against Denver. Denver, I know, has been giving up a lot of points to point guards. They've been giving up a lot of fantasy points to the point guard position. They've just been really bad defensively overall against point guards now. You know, Aaron Gordon probably guards John Morant here. Um, I doubt, like, Jamal Murray would guard him. So is it, like, the best matchup for John Morant? I mean... Maybe, maybe so, or maybe, maybe not. I mean, I don't try to look too much in an individual matchup, but I know the DV, DVP stats have this is a pretty good matchup because I know Denver has been bad against point guards this year. But, you know, it doesn't even matter. I mean, John Morant is matchup proof. He can put up huge games every night. 10-4, I think is a reasonable price tag here. I'm definitely interested in Ja. I think he's always in play, and on a short slate like this, he's someone that I, you know, have some interest in. The rest of Memphis, though, like Triple J, Dylan Brooks, at their price tags, they're like okay, but I don't love either one. Steven Adams is only 5,100, and you would think going up against Jokic here, they're going to want him to play as many minutes as he can. Like, he's a big body they can put on Jokic. As long as he can avoid foul trouble, I think we do get like 30, 32 minutes from Steven Adams today. At 5,100, I think he's okay on a short slate like this. More of a GPP play, but Steven Adams is a guy that when he gets minutes, he can have those random games where he puts up, you know, 40, 45 DK points. I mean, he did put up 48 against Philadelphia, had nine points, 16 rebounds. He had you know, three blocks, three steals. Like, he can have those type of games. Um, and I think they're going to want him out there against Jokic. So he probably would be my second favorite play from Memphis behind John Morant. But everyone else on Memphis, I'm pretty much off of. I mean, in general, I think you're kind of looking to the stars in this game. 
but we'll definitely need to keep an eye on the status of Jamal Murray. Hopefully we get some news on that before lock because if Jamal Murray does get ruled out, that opens up Bruce Brown and Bones Highland as pretty good plays overall. But that'll do it, guys, for this little five-game Tuesday slate. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. As always, appreciate you watching. Hit that like button. If you guys did enjoy, hit that subscribe button if you have not yet. And as always, if you, you know, haven't checked out Prize Picks, check them out. They're the sponsor of this video. You guys can sign up for Prize Picks. Use my promo code, promo code NOAH. You look at the bottom of the screen or just click the link in the description. You will get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. And I should have a video posted for Prize Picks today. If I don't get it up on Monday night, it'll definitely be up sometime Tuesday afternoon. Sharing some plays I like for Prize Picks. Check that video out if you guys are interested. But Good luck on this five-game slate. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, appreciate you uh, checking out these DFS videos. Again, hit that like button. If you guys enjoyed, hit that subscribe button as well. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.